Hi, today we're going to talk about zero and negative exponents. So as we get started, let's put your name at the top to keep your papers belonging to you. So we talked last class about how any number in the whole wide world to the zero power is equal to one. So let's go ahead and circle, highlight, box, star, underline, that particular phrase, just so we can again put that into our minds. We also discussed last class how if you have an, a base with a negative exponent, that is equivalent to the reciprocal of that base, now with a positive exponent. It does take a little bit of adjusting and trying to figure out, but it, it comes. I think the most common question is where did this one come from? Remember, whenever you have an integer, there's always a one underneath of it. So when you take the reciprocal, when you flip over that base, the one is now on top. Let's go look at a couple of word problem examples. So problem A, 3.9 to the zero power, that is equal to one. I mean, that's it, you're done. There's nothing else to do. It's done because anything to the zero power is equal to one. Part B, nine to the negative two, that is equivalent to one over nine squared. Remember the integer has a one underneath of it. You take the reciprocal of that base, which was nine. And so now the one is on the top in the numerator and the nine is in the denominator. My exponent is now positive. And then we can simplify it because nine times nine, nine squared is 81. So my final answer is one over 81. Done. Isn't that great? All right, let's look at another set of examples. So here we're going to simplify this 7b to the negative 3 over a squared. That's what we're starting with. So to get this problem started, our text separated the numerator into its two parts. And I know that there are two distinct parts because there are no parentheses surrounding the seven and the B. So only the B has the negative exponent on it. The seven doesn't have one. So it's just multiplying to that B. It's a separate piece. So here, they first adjusted the negative exponent to use the rule so that we use the reciprocal and made the exponent positive. And then these two terms were put back together. A squared times B cubed is just A squared B cubed. Seven times one is seven times one. So you just multiply straight across like you normally would and this is your final answer. Done. That's not too bad. Let's go do some practice problems together. Let's see how to make these work. All right, we're gonna write each expression as an integer or a simple fraction or an expression that has only positive exponents. That question of how do I know when I'm done? Only positive exponents are allowed. That's it. So let's see what's created. All right, problem number one. Any number in the whole wide world to the zero power, which includes 2.3, that's a number, to the zero power, what does that equal? One. That's it. 
you're done. Love that problem. Wish we had all of that every day. Okay, number three, right below it. So here, I don't have any parentheses. The only piece that has the exponent of a negative 5 is the a. So let's separate this. This is 2 times a to the negative 5, just so I can see it. All right. So now let's say, okay, negative exponent, let's make that a positive exponent. This becomes 2 times 1 over a to the 5th power. All right, let's bring that back together so that we can see where they go. Remember we said integers always have a 1 underneath of them. So we multiply straight across and find that we have 2 over a to the 5th power. That's my final answer. All right, that was pretty great. Number five, see if you can do it real quick. I'll wait on you. Did you say that this 19 has a one under it? And as a result, when we take the reciprocal, we've got 1 over 19 to the first power. If you did, that's pretty great. Now, let's have a conversation real quick about this exponent. Do you need to show that something is to the first power, the 1 power? No, you don't. It's like saying 1x versus x. It means the same thing. The 1 is understood. And you're not going to see to the one power written in a problem on a worksheet or on one of your state exams. What you're going to see is 1 over 19. And that's it. How'd you do? I hope you did great. All right, see if you can do number seven. I'll wait for you. All right, let's check it out. This time, the 7 and the Q were in parentheses. That means everything in the parentheses is going to be using the reciprocal property. So all of this had a 1 underneath of it. And therefore, all of this will now go underneath of a 1. And for the reason that we stated in problem number five, I do not need to put that there is an exponent of a one. It's just not necessary. It's understood. Done. All right, let's check out number nine. So in problem nine, do we have any parentheses? No. So which part has the exponent of a 0? The 1.8, the C, or both of them? Good job. It's just the C. So really, this is 1.8 times C to the 0 power. So what did we say about anything to the 0 power? That's right. It's equal to 1. So this is 1.8 times 1, which equals, you guessed it, 1.8, and that's your final answer. Okay, why don't you pause the video and try to do the even problems of 2 through 10. Come and ask me if you need some help. Let's go look at number 11. So we need to write the expression so that it, again, only contains positive exponents. So we're going to simplify also, if possible, where possible. So 
So problem number 11, we know that negative exponents tell us to take the reciprocal of our base. So my 6 already is negative, and it's going to continue to be a negative fraction. I have some people ask me, so why is the negative up there on the top instead of down with the 6? Well, yeah, you can put it down there with the 6. Technically, it does mean the same thing. But you open yourself up to risks of losing the negative, forgetting the negative. And if you have a negative in the middle of a problem that you've lost, you will drastically change the problem, not for the better. Okay, so I usually put the negative either all the way out in front or up at the top. Let's simplify this. So really, I have how many sixes? Oh yeah, three. So this is negative one over six times six times six. You've got a good calculator and a great brain. What is 6 times 6 times 6? Did you get 1, no, negative 1 over 216? If you did, great job. That's it. Let's look at number 13. In number 13, I do not have any parentheses, but I do have several pieces in this one expression. I have 7 times x to the negative 8 times y to the 0. All right. Do you know which piece is going to be flipped upside down so that we use its reciprocal? The 7, the x, or the y? Good, it's the x because it has a negative exponent on it. Do you know which piece is going to turn into a 1? Good, it's the y. So this ends up being 7 times 1 over x to the eighth power times 1. Let's see what that cleans up to look like. There's a 1 underneath the 7, so we know we have to multiply straight across. And anything times 1 is just that thing. So I have a result of 7 over x to the eighth power. And that's it. That's number 13. Number 15. Let's see, we have some parentheses in this one. So let's see what happens. So we know we've got this quantity of negative 8v to the negative 2 power. So this is what's going to be flipped over to make the reciprocal. The w stays where it is in the numerator. So currently, this will be w cubed over the quantity of negative 8v squared. All right, so the W cubed, it just sits quietly, waiting for possible any attention. This squared is going to be distributed through both parts of the denominator, the negative 8 and the V. So this becomes W cubed over negative 8 squared V squared. All right, we're almost done. The only thing we have left to fine tune is this negative 8 squared. We can simplify that. 
So W cubed continues to sit there quietly. Negative 8 squared. What is negative 8 times negative 8? Negative times a negative is a positive. 8 times 8 is 64. And then V squared. That's it. Nice job. All right, number 17. Let's finish this up. What do I have in parentheses? Oh, 3 times x times y. And all of that is to the 0 power. So all of this is honestly, truly worth what? 1 times this z that is waiting patiently. So what's 1 times z? z. And it's finished. It's done. That one looked scary, but it was really one of the easiest problems on the whole paper. Wasn't that great? Okay. I need you to try 12 through 18 of the even problems. Come and talk to me if you're stuck or if you finish.